morning and my name is Justina Ojla and I'm so grateful to be here today. What a wonderful way to start my day. I'm a second generation settler of Punjabi ancestry, born and raised on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Stolo nations. While I'm blessed to have grown up in such a quiet and calm community, it would be disingenuous to identify it as home without acknowledging the history and the people who this land truly belongs to. I'm aware of the opportunity I have to be an active and curious learner and bring my learnings to my family members and members of this community who do not know the histories of these lands. Kitsilano takes its name after a Squamish First Nations chief whose people were displaced by local government in 1901. At the time, the area was a dense forest, but an interactive one to occupy due to its flat land, proximity to train and water, and the prospective popularity of Vancouver as a city. The story of the Squamish chief and the role of the government is unfortunately a common one. In addition to Kitsilano, UBC has been an integral part of my life. Firstly, UBC is very close to home, a 10 minute drive from the home I was born in. Secondly, as a student at UBC and finally now as a staff. When reflecting on my life, I realized that I'm connected to the Musqueam peoples in many ways. And I understand that I've been the beneficiary of lands that never belonged to me. I have benefited from the crisp air of the UBC forests, brisk walks of the trails that extend through them and the cold water of the seas that bank our beaches. Until recently, I have not given my full appreciation of the land that I inhabit and the people whose sacrifice has been my bounty. I must respect, consider, and reflect on the history that exists here. In sharing my beginnings, I invite all of you to consider your roots and acknowledge the land you occupy today. Thank you so much, and now I'll pass it over to Sabrina for the rest of the day. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is not Sabrina. In fact, this is Jamie here from uh, DWF. I'm the events lead. Um, Sabrina, unfortunately, is having some Wi-Fi issues at the moment. So I'm just going to jump in really quickly to introduce today's session with Paul Pike. Um, Paul is a Mi'kmaq musician and composer from Corner Brook, Newfoundland. He's the singer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist for the award-winning contemporary First Nations rock band Medicine Dream. Medicine Dream released three recordings internationally, two with Canyon Records and one independently. Pike lived in Alaska for 25 years before returning home to Newfoundland in 2015 to be close to his family, friends, and land he is so much a part of. Paul's newest release, Echoes from Our Ancestors, is the first Native American flute album to ever be released from Newfoundland. Its mostly instrumental compositions are meditative and soul-soothing. The sound is profound on all musical levels, and it's guaranteed to be, guaranteed to be a favorite for, for this year. Um, so I'm thrilled to introduce Paul. Um, Paul will have, you know, about 15 or so minutes to uh, work his magic. I know he has plenty to share today. And then afterwards, we will be facilitating a Q&A with some of the schools that we have uh, joining us on the stream, as well as watching live from Facebook or YouTube. So please use our chat, ask any questions, and we will look forward to getting to that afterwards. So Paul, thank you so much for joining us today. Over to you. Oh, Gwenid Updut, Begu Maxuldio, Wilalan. Thank you very much. I'm really appreciated to be here. Uh, I come from Uktahamagok and the Mi'kmaq Nation over here in Newfoundland on the east coast of Canada and really grateful to be here to share some songs. Um, part of my, I guess, purpose of, of composing the songs was I, I felt that we had a story that really needed to be told. And a lot of people didn't even know that there were Mi'kmaq people here in Newfoundland. So we are here and we, are, uh, we certainly welcome everyone to come and visit with us. This song is, uh, I'm going to start off with, it's called In This World. And it's uh, one of the songs I composed with the group Medicine Dream. <laughs> And I'm grateful for the circle of people who have come my way. I won't forget all their goodness, 
They kept me afloat when I felt my drowning. I thank all my elders who taught me to pray for all my relations at home and away. You gave me this dream so it was real, and I've taken this challenge. I've just got to learn to be. world Growing up in my homeland I have this place I used to go to In the forest up the stream I sit on this rock and I burn Singing. I dream that I travel to faraway places and make lots of friends. When I move to Alaska, this soul be the dream. It's time to go home. We thankful for all I have seen in this beautiful world. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the song. Uh, one of the, the big things that happened in Newfoundland is that um, the denial that, that we were uh, even existed here on the island. A lot of our people, of course, were known throughout Atlantic Canada. Um, but we had uh, the government at the time pretty much said there were nobody here. There were no, no Indigenous peoples left on the island other than the Beothic people who were uh, physically extinct. So uh, that's why it's so important to be able to share these songs with you and uh, we hope that you could come to learn more about the Uktahamaguk Mi'kmaq people. Uktahamaguk is the original name of the island of Newfoundland. We all have a, a trail, a story about our families and you can uh, Regardless of which nationality you are, or where you come from, but you might think about in this song is picturing a place. Maybe it's a creek or a lake or a beach, some place that you can go to that maybe your family have used for generations and generations. And uh, it's all about this song is all about that connection. The 
trail. Take a trip into the mountains To find the trail that takes me home To smell the dew in early morning Wakes the memories of my soul So many years ago Since you walked upon this place And I can see the sunlight It puts pride upon my face Well, 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 Caribou across this country They fall and roll familiar trails Makes me think about my people How a love could never fail A love could never fail Puts pride upon my face It puts pride upon my So, a big part of, uh, of uh, the, sort, the stories and the songs that, uh, that I enjoy sharing, a lot of it comes, uh, it's traditionally influenced. And um, so, uh, a big part of our, I'd say, a, a lot of our cultures is not just in the past. We want to preserve those traditional songs, but we also want to show that we are here today. And so, uh, I composed this song called Missing You. And there's a place where I grew up. Uh, it was, I think it was around New Year's. And uh, uh, it was, a, the ice would be frozen over, but there was a hole in the ice and it was a beautiful full moon. And there were two swans sitting in that, in the hole in the ice. And it was just me and the swans, beautiful starlit night and a full moon. And this song came and I was thinking about, um, 
usually we would be together, all of our people. We would be singing the songs, we'd be sharing our food, because food is very important to us, and our, as well as uh, harvesting our foods and sharing that tradition with our, with our, our communities and our families. So I was missing everybody, so this song came in, and I'm going to sing this in vocables, and I'm going to sing it in the Mi'kmaq language, and then I'm going to translate uh, into English. So hope that you enjoy the song. culture we didn't know that we um, we had a uh, Native American flute tradition we found uh, we heard these old s stories of uh, Migamwe Sioux and Migamwe Sioux was like a spirit of the woods and he was a flute player so uh, they, the neat thing about those old stories is uh, you know I think they were this particular story was was told to keep people from wandering too far in the word the woods you know like Curiosity killed the cat kind of thing. So the beautiful songs from the flute would be played and uh, People would want to go follow it and they'd go around the tree They think they're gonna see Migam Waisu playing that flute But he would shapeshift into a squirrel or a fox things like that, you know those kinds of stories So I, I put out a, a recording uh, called echoes of our ancestors uh, just this year and uh, it's it's mostly instrumental flute music, but I have strings, a lot of other instrumentation with it, but I hope that you'll like this instrument. In the Mi'kmaq language, we call it Bibuguahan. B 
Bibel Guachen is the name of this instrument. I think I have time for one more song and I'd like to do a special song that's called The Gathering Song and it was composed by uh, George Paul and George is, uh, is, Mi is Mi'kmaq as well and he's from uh, Medibanagia First Nation in New Brunswick. So this song is traditionally done on a drum and I, I uh, decided to put it to a guitar and hope that you'll enjoy this song. a little bit of that song, The Gathering Song. I appreciate everyone for letting me share these songs with you, and I hope to be able to do that again someday soon. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for, for anything. Uh, uh, we sound like I am, there we go. <laughs> um, so a couple of questions that were from the chat are, um, you are an amazing musician, Paul. Who are some of your biggest influences? I like the music of Bill Miller. If you've never heard Bill Miller's music, you should check him out. He's uh, from the Mohican Nation, and he's just the most amazing human. Uh, his songs are really real and true to his heart. Uh, so he has a big influence on me. Uh, for the flute music, uh, R. Carlos Nakai 
Uh, Douglas Spotted Eagle is also a very, very good flute player. So I, I get influenced by a lot of great players, <clears throat> mostly not just the music, but I like, uh, like I was speaking about Bill. All his songs are real, and it's all about his life, and it's, it's uh, that authenticity that, that really inspires me. So we actually had a class come in, um, Richmond Green Secondary School. Um, they just wanted to say, unfortunately, I seem to be blocked from the chat um, just on their end. But the students want to share this comment for Paul. Um, amazing performance. Thank you so much. Continue to spread the positivity. And I'll lead with that with another question. Natalie G asks, what was the first instrument you've learned? Which was the most challenging to learn and which is your favorite to play? Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I grew up in a musical family and actually my, my background's actually rock music. I grew up in a family, my uncles played drum sets and things like that. So I guess that was the first instrument I learned to play. Um, and of course, I was inspired by a guitar. Uh, it was something that I could, I could play, I could compose songs with, and and share. And it was it was quite the challenge. Um, but yeah, and I didn't, I didn't really, uh, I would say, get really the traditional music really didn't grab me till probably around the early 1990s when I started hearing that more. And uh, I know back here in Newfoundland for a long, long time, people. Uh, Kind of, uh, we had such a hard time with colonialism. A lot of families hid their uh, their ancestry, and so they were kind of afraid to do a lot of things openly. But uh, but we do it now, and so that's part of the purpose why I want to share all these songs. But but uh, same with the flute, the bibiguahan, I just love it, and uh, it's one of those instruments that really uh, speaks to the heart. And I've seen people, the tears come forth when they hear that instrument. There's something special about the bibiguahan. But uh, I hope I answered your question, but thank you. So I'm actually gonna invite Miss Walker's class to the stream. If you have any questions for Paul, um, please let us know. We're just gonna bring you in. Uh, Chi miigwech. Um, it was so amazing to hear that music live, the the flute, um, I, we were not. Oh, sorry, we were not expecting the flute to come in like that. So Chimi Gwech for the drumming and the flute. And of course, the guitar was beautiful. Um, I also wanted to thank you so much for bringing up the Joey Smallwood piece. Not enough conversation happens around that and um, how Indigenous peoples were essentially wiped out of the history books when Joey Smallwood became the first premier, indicating that there were just none in Newfoundland. So I really appreciate you mentioning that. Um, I've been in, you know, uh, engaging in some of those conversations and thank you so much for bringing that up today. And hopefully those that don't know some of that history will take the time to do some of that learning as well. I really appreciate that. So um, just a question, how do you think students can further engage in reconciliation, um, Paul? Uh, you know, the whole idea about reconciliation is there's two parts to it, uh, and there's there's the truth that we need we need to be willing to hear the truth no matter how hard it is, and uh, and so like for the non-indigenous people that are they're going to need our support too, to uh, to really look at the fact that maybe some of the history they've been taught hasn't been accurate, and the shock of that. The, uh, the reconciliation is we all need to be willing to be able to step forward and come forward and uh, to create spaces for Indigenous communities and Indigenous people uh, that have been long taken up uh, by the colonial uh, mindset. So whether that's in government, in schools, being able to provide an opportunity for the community uh, to share who they are. As you know, most of us learn about other countries, Australia, United States, and everywhere else. But very few of us know about our own, our own front, doorstep, our front doorstep. So being able to allow uh, people to have an opportunity to share a little bit about their home. Awesome. 
Awesome. Thank you, Paul, for today. Um, I'm just going to wrap it up for today's session. Um, again, we are the Gord Downey and Cheney Wanjack Fund. Um, inspired by Cheney's story, Gord Downey. Um, sorry. <laughs> the Gord Downey and Cheney Wanjack Fund. Um, inspired by Cheney's story, Gord's and Gord's call to action uh, to build a better Canada. The Gord Downey and Cheney Wanjack Fund aims to build cultural understanding and create a path towards reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. Our goal is to improve the, the lives of Indigenous people by building awareness, education, and connections between all people in Canada. It is great to see everyone here today, and thank you to everyone that joined the live. Again, miigwech to Justina and Paul for joining us. Um, I really loved the music and everything that I could hear when I wasn't having technical difficulties. Um, again, we have a another DWF, DWF live session coming on International Women's Day, which is on March 8th um, at 1 or at 11 a.m. Um, you can also register to join the event and be one of the schools that uh, joins in live, um, live with us. And um, if you wanna ask Candice Linklater any questions, she is the founder of the Relentless Indigenous Women's Consulting um, Incorporation. So, that is coming up on the 8th. We also have another one, Donna Ross, and that is at the end of March. So make sure you register and join in for in live for that session. And again, thank you everyone for joining. Um, and make sure you join us live for Candice Linklater. <laughs>